Hi y'all, it's Tuesday. It's Wendy with Hardneck Farms and I'm going to attempt this again. It's awfully windy, but I'm going to go ahead and try because I need a lot of the beneficial bugs in the greenhouse to take care of the pest. Because on this farm, we do not use fertilizers, chemicals, anything, nothing. All natural, the way God made it. So that's how I roll. But there are lace wings in this orchard and I don't know if they're the ones I've released or they're here naturally, but I'm going to collect them and put some in the greenhouse if I can get some to get stirred up. A lot of the times around dusk is when you can get them, but they hang out around these trees. You can kind of do this and they will fly up. bad comments. I haven't mowed. We are so behind. When you have a farm, there's a lot of work and not enough time. So I'm in my grungies because here in a little while I'll have to do some mowing. But it's been a laundry day and YouTube day. Looks like I'm going to lose this tree too. Aww. I have lost a huge chunk of my orchard from the wildfire. Even the trees that didn't burn, they got scorched and they're splitting. Sad. Okay guys, I'm going to move this a little bit, go over here, see if I can't find any over here. <sighs> it's so hard to find these little bugs. There's just not a lot of them right now. We'll try on this part of the orchard and see. No guarantee, but they are the most beneficial things you can put in your garden, in your, they're just amazing. <clears throat> Real quick, and then I'll put this back. Kind of want to show you guys, see parts of the trees that burned a little bit, they didn't totally burn to the ground. My allergies are bothering me really bad. My voice is just a little bit hoarse, so bear with me. There's another one over there splitting. That one, I think I just need to take it out. Poor baby, it just, it burned way too bad. The arborist said, leave it alone, just see. But, so a lot of the trees burned, you can tell. I'm going to set this down again, and I'm going to attempt to find some lace wings. And I don't know if it's the wind. Maybe it's affecting this. Could be. But there's normally a bunch right down in here. And I catch them, put them in there.
if it has to do with the wind. I thought the other night it's because I tried to do it and it was getting dark and I couldn't see them. There's six temps over here where it's pretty where it just didn't get mowed. There should be some in here. The only cherry tree that didn't burn. I had probably 25 cherry trees. I oh know it just breaks my heart. So you can tell these trees with the big trunks versus the little trees. So when the fire hit, I had back here. It was totally different. There were all these trees. We've taken down several of them. If you look at the first vlog I started several years ago, you can go into Hardneck Farms and you can look at the, I did a video of the farm before the fire. And when I first put in the orchard, it was just beautiful out here. So I had a hundred and something loads of wood chips back there. And they were dumped right back there where those, um, maple trees are now and when the fire was coming it was coming from this direction and because there were trees all the way to the fence up that high and all that caught fire and it rained ash so it was real sporadic here and there like you know a few over here burned now all the trees in that way burned for that cherry tree and maybe one other maybe two apples and the rest of them burned that survived that plum but these that one it's just not going to do anything i may just uh cut it way back and graft on it and see if that don't do anything but uh, anyway it uh it sure was a mess. So that was my only cherry tree I have left. I don't know why the bugs like the GoPro. Maybe they want to be on my YouTube channel too. But uh, yeah, to me, the farm is, is sad and depressing. But if you had seen me probably in the summer of 2014, I just sat out here and cried. The back of this farm burned for an entire week. It was, it was bad. Over the fence, all that burned. It was still burning for way over a week. Um, it was pretty out of control. And I tell you what, it just took out everything. It messed everything up because that 2014, what snakes escaped from the fire areas? moved to the areas that didn't burn. So we had rattlesnakes and copperheads like all over this farm. You couldn't even do anything. I was so depressed. I didn't even want to be out here. I just cried and cried. Because of all that hard work and money and working so hard to get those real nice varieties of fruit trees and I don't know. It's just a lot of work. I had purple raspberries, yellow, orange, black raspberries. I only had one set of black raspberries that did not burn. The rest of them burned. I had red raspberries. They burned. So, yeah, the back of this farm is just a mess. And the ecosystem is severely messed up. 
and that over a hundred loads of wood chips burned and it just rained that ash down all over where, where I grow. Not to mention it burned, but then it, the wind blew that ash and it just covered the whole area. Um, it did burn up into the garden and we had just mulched with bamboo, of course. And oh man, it burned. It burned so bad. So that big giant row in my garden, I was not able to plant mint for three years. Oh, did you see that? Look over there. Uh, I don't know if you caught that. This GoPro has pretty wide range, so maybe you did. There's three or four owls back there. There's some big old hawks. There's turkey buzzards. There's all kinds of stuff out here. <laughs> It's kind of neat if you just set out here. We've got cameras up everywhere. So we have wildlife cams, but I'm not allowed to share the pictures or anything I have before. My husband gets on to me because then people know where our cameras are. Which, you know, I wasn't thinking. But when you see cool looking critters, you just take pictures and show them. But anyhow, that's... Oh my goodness, that poor tree is going to get choked out if I don't do something about it. So I think I'm going to try this. I saw one of my friends, their YouTube channel, Heirloom Permaculture, they use comfrey leaves for fertilizer. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever because uh, taking your uh, stuff after the season and composting it is wonderful. I never dreamed of using it around the fruit trees, but I guess that is a, a, a form of the permaculture. So I'm gonna have to grow a lot of comfrey. But I'm thinking about if we get good rains, just taking out these, these really dead burnt trees and just looking for those varieties again because everything was strategically planted to cross pollinate with each other. So, it's going to be a work in progress, but oh well. Gives me something to uh, share with you guys about. Another thing with the um, lace wings, when you catch them, they, they put off this musk, and they smell like mothballs. Don't let it, you know, deter you because once you put them in your greenhouse you don't smell that again it's just because you stirred them up or you caught them and they release that musk because they think they're going to get eaten so don't let it bother you just wash everything and then just put them in there they will eat the heck out of aphids white flies mealy bugs all the greenhouse pest without using chemicals and it's good for the environment you will never catch me spraying a darn thing i'm so against it that's what's wrong with our food that's what's wrong with the planet we're destroying it don't get me started on that but anyhow i just wanted to share with you guys how I farm. I know this is the end of the season and I didn't get to do hardly anything this season because of all the rain. We had historic flooding and our ecosystems messed up. Plus we don't have bees anymore or most of the good pollinators are just being killed. There's just too much spring. I guess when people run out of food, they'll get a clue that they shouldn't have done that. It's just going to be too late then. And it's sad. So I'm hoping that a bunch of people will get together and at least do their part on their farms and not spray chemicals. Because you wipe out all the good bugs. It's kind of funny. You can ask my husband. We, we stopped at this farm sale. And I was just checking to see if they had anything I needed. Because you can find really cool stuff at, at um, farm sales or garage sales, things like that in a small town or out in the country. Those are my favorite. And there was a praying mantis on their table and it had been just staying there all day. And I asked them, I said, can I take that? And they said, yeah. 
they gave me a jar with um, like a, a old time uh, sugar shaker and the top was broke. So there was that little hole. So we got air just until we got home and then I released him into the, um, I put him in the butterfly garden. There's one that stays in the, uh, and I released that one the year before and it stayed right there in that herb garden and then it was eating the chiggers in the elderberries. So I was like, heck. And every time I went to pick, I would see it. So I know it stays right there. Those things are beneficial. Now, however, they will eat your good bugs too. So I wouldn't use them for total pest control because they will eat everything. But they are beneficial. And a few of them here and there ain't gonna hurt anything, especially when you got the acreage we do. A couple of them ain't gonna hurt. So you're gonna see a lot of changes on the farm. And uh, this winter, we're really gonna be doing some major projects and into the spring. So I'm gonna be sharing those things on YouTube. When I hit 300 subscribers, I'm gonna ask three trivia questions and the first person to answer those will get Hoboken coffee from the local roaster here in Historic Guthrie, Oklahoma. It's called Hoboken Coffee Roasters. And once you have this coffee, you will want to move to